Richard Pafant. Font. All right, intersections. Oh, <laughs> that car did an amazing red stage maneuver. TN, here we go. TN, all right, crest of the hill, blind corner. Sun's gonna be in our eyes pretty soon. Sun's gonna be in our eyes. Good job, good job. Able to handle it. Now, if that was a car, if he was on a car, if this was a car, we would have gotten hit. Boom, we would have gotten hit. So we're going through here. It's a crest of a hill. We're going up the hill. You can't see around the corner. And you see how it's a blind corner because the road disappears. Now, one thing I like to look at is like, where am I at in time and space? Okay, where am I at? Well, I'm on earth and you know, the sun is over here. It sets in the west. Okay, where I'm at. Okay, so good. The north is that way. But look at the look at the mountains. So obviously, he he kind of knew, or this rider knew ahead of time because they're the one riding. But we're watching the video. So take a look at some of these different things. You see how there's shade over here, light over here. Okay, shade over here. Where do you think the light's gonna be? So that light is directed this way. I know we're teaching Earth sciences a little bit here, but this is gonna help you out. It's gonna help you out. So when you pass this corner. You're going to get light straight in your eyes. So that to me tells me I got to be a little bit careful, at least know that it's there. Now, one of the cool things is I think of this, it has a visor, but my helmet has the visor. So I, I'm already dipping my head down a little bit and looking, looking this way like that. That way the visor blocks a lot of that light. So we're going through here and this is probably a two lane road and knowing full well that this is a blind turn. Look at where, look where the original position was. So we're in. Yeah, it's a two-lane road. You see the, the center line stripe right here. We're in lane position like 1.5 slash 2. Okay. So let's go more. Okay, somebody's got to adjust that. So he's in the middle. He's in the middle. Now it's like it's a blind turn. So what I'm going to do is get over here in lane position 3 as far as I can because you don't know if anybody is going to be coming out this way and blocking the rest of the lanes. Boom, you got hit, right? So he found the safest spot positioned for safety. Planning your ride, positioning yourself for safety is the best thing you could possibly do. Locating hazards is great, but at least set yourself up for success. And this is what's happening. Set himself up for success, put him in a spot where he could avoid a vehicle and did it. And there's the sun in the eyes. This was so good. I love picking apart these ones. Maybe I just needed to have a nice little chat at the beginning of the stream. I don't know. Richard Pafant. Pafant. All right, intersections. Oh, <laughs> that car did an amazing red stage maneuver. Right, Elizabeth? And uh, we did at least some progressive brake pressure with a middle finger thrown in there for extra sauce. Now, he's going to smack that, I think. I wouldn't do that. So let's go back. So we're getting it on here. Great space cushion. We're getting into a, a, an area where we need to be in orange stage. If you don't know what orange stage is, just look on the on the walls here in the, in the classroom. Okay, we got the we got the whole thing: white, yellow, orange, red, and brown. And then we also have the rescue card right here. So the rescue card, once again, you'll learn a little bit more uh, when you go to MotorcycleTrainingConcepts.com and stuff like that. So we're getting to here orange stage, prepped and ready for anything. Great space cushion, good vision. We're planning our ride. We're kind of in the blind spot with the truck next to us, but. We have a good escape right here. So we're doing fine. So we have that side of the vehicle. We are already reacting. As soon as I hit that space bar on this, we're already reacting. We have that side of the vehicle. We are already starting to do this because we saw it. Now, this person's not going to have the best amount of space cushion. It's going to be very hard to do a swerve, very hard to do anything, but you have to have great perception reaction. And it seems like this car driver is paying attention because watch this. Swerve. Got a little bit of swerve. We still have a good space cushion. We maintained it. So now we have to react to this dumb dumb. We don't know what they're doing. I have a feeling that they're going to stay in this lane, but who knows? They could stay in this lane. What I do know is that I can possibly swerve here, but you know what? I can also slow down, decelerate before I get to them. So I'll decelerate a little bit, use some progressive brake pressure. Make sure you are squeezing, not slamming the brakes in a panic. Usually you slam brakes in a panic because you got surprised. We're trying to make it to where you're not surprised when you are out riding. So orange stage in an intersection, good progressive brake pressure, go and honk the horn if you want. But remember, we want to plan our ride a little bit better, position for safety, locate hazards, adapt to those hazards. Did a great job adapting. 
that car up ahead navigated a threat with a red stage maneuver of swerving, okay? So good job, everybody here. You know, flip them off, you know, whatever, but, you know, make sure you're safe too. The fond. Switch lanes. Are we going to punch it? Are we going to punch? I just want to double check. I think we're kind of far away. All right, here we go. We got a nice each other blanket. Without any signaling, changes lane, completely pushing the bike off the road. Lots of traffic, merge issues. On. Good swerve. Merge issues on the interstate. You don't have cross traffic, like an intersection. So when you're out riding on the interstate, uh, Nova Rider, um, which I'm pretty sure you do all the time because you got a great blanket right there. Those are actually really comfy. You lost your GoPro. Um, you have merge issues. And it's, it's high speed. Uh, it's kind of scary. It's kind of scary because if you fall down and you hit the ground, you're going to be sliding for quite a while. And that's why you need to wear gear too. Part of being a smart rider is all of that. Okay. So situational awareness, money, thing. you guys know the deal. Anyways, we're getting over here. We're riding. We're riding. Now, here's the thing that I always go into orange stage for. I treat, I treat these billboards. I treat, I treat these not billboards. I treat these signs as as intersections almost. Now, why? Write in the comments why I think that this is almost like an intersection. Just this this specific one. This specific one. What's what's the difference between here and here? I want you guys to think. Here and here. That's an exit only. This is, you can exit or stay on. So whenever you see the yellow, let's go ahead and get a little bit closer. Without any signaling, change this lane. We're in LA. Okay, we got a little bit of sun glare, but it's yellow, okay? This is what I'm talking about right here. This lane ends. This lane ends. This lane can turn, but it can continue going. That's what it. That's what that means. That's what that means right there. This lane ends. This lane, you can still make the exit, but you can also keep going. So if we're in this lane, like the motorcycle rider, that means we're exiting. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of car driving right here. A little bit of driving uh, road strategy. And then this lane right here, you can keep going. So when I see car drivers just like merge into here, they get freaked out because I have a feeling they don't know this and that they need to get to this lane because it says exit. And this is also an exit. So if you're a motorcycle rider, don't rush. If, you're, if you need to get off in LA, you can stay in this lane still. Just, t just get off. This one just ends, okay? Now we understand that. So when I see something like that, where it's a last minute change, exactly dark, is that that's an intersection to me. People are going to start merging in and out, in and out, in and out. So I'm really concerned about that. So when I see that, I'm going to be in orange stage and there's that merge. Now, great job with the perception reaction. We have an escape route over here onto the shoulder. This shoulder, typical shoulders, by the way, everyone on the interstate, typical shoulders are as wide as the lane itself. So if you need to swerve onto that lane, swerve onto that lane. Now there's a lot of road debris and nobody really cleans it up and, and whatever. So get yourself back in and watch out for road surface hazards. But great job on the swerve. Now let's be prepped and ready for this by being in orange stage when we see that exit only sign back here. When we see this right here, well, get back into class. We get to right here. That's what you need to go do. Get into orange stage. That's a definite orange stage, right, everybody? Right, class? Just lane. Stop pushing the button. Bike off the road. Good swerve. All right, here we go. Moving on with Kevin Banks. Well, come on, new riders. If you want to know how to ride effectively and smart, make sure you grab the Smart Rider Basic Training ebook. I talk about how to plan your ride, what the Smart Rider principles are all about, the color code chart, what patterns to look for, how to rescue another rider. Anyways, you got to just check it out. Make sure you click the link in the description. There's a discount code. It's the cheapest it's ever going to be. Only 500 people are going to be able to get the code. So make sure you grab yours now. All right, let's get back into the video. A cyclist, barely. I mean, it's probably a, a, a Harley, right? Oh, wait, no, it's not. Um, we're going around. Now, this is a line of sight issue. Now, we have to make a judgment if we're going to pass this vehicle. Thankfully, we didn't choose to do it at a high speed. Oh, he got passed up. And uh, we slowed down and stopped at the time. So this is what I see going on through this head. Th through this head, this rider's head. Uh, we're going to pass this vehicle. And by vehicle, I mean person on a cycle. 
and we're gonna go around here. So that's a pretty easy thing to, to maneuver around. You see how you can see pretty far around. You have good line of sight with a with a cyclist. So look at, you can see what's in front of the cyclist. You can see that there's no cars coming in front of the cyclist. You can see that you can swerve around this vehicle. And then I'm gonna say vehicles, it's easier. And it's a, it's a slotted line, so you can do it. So easy decision to go around. Now let's take a look at this. Is this an easy decision? No. Now, why is it not an easy decision, class, compared to the cyclist? Why is this not an easy decision? Why did we not just speed around it? Why didn't we just go? It's vision. We can't see anything. So this rider has determined that his vision is extremely important. And I want you to know this. Vision is extremely important to every rider, every driver. So... For people to speed around this vehicle, like they get in the left lane, just haul ass. Not good. Not good. Because you can't see. That means you're just trusting the road is going to continue. You're trusting that no vehicles are going to continue. I'm telling you, your vision is the only thing you can guarantee. So if you can't see around a vehicle, anticipate something bad. If you can see around a vehicle, you can make an educated decision at that point. So, Kevin Banks, you're in the chat right now. Thank you for being a smart rider. This was good. Let's watch it fully. I don't think I have to talk anymore. So, Kevin did a good job. Saw around this uh, person on the bike. Good line of sight. All right, make a good decision. You're not trusting that, you know, the road's going to continue. You're not trust trusting that there's no cars there. You're literally guaranteeing there's no cars there. You're guaranteeing you can see around it. So, that's the important part. So, guaranteeing you can see around it. Make an educated decision can't see anything around this vehicle makes an educated decision to slow it down and thankfully he did now he's gonna get passed up by another car i mean cycle and now he's got to catch up just go ahead and drift behind him you know pay let him pace it's up to you kevin did a good job i see you in the chat all right moving on rwg4 2985 that driver almost hit a wall. All right. Oh my gosh. All right, so let's see what happens. Okay, it's another issue. So way ahead earlier in the video, in the middle of the road, swerving in and out of traffic, acting like a fool. Of course it's a Mustang. Nice job with the progressive brake pressure Mustang. Almost into the wall. Now. Of course it's a Mustang. So we got this Mustang rider, driver, whatever you want to call it. Moving in and out of traffic. He's hauling ass through the middle. He's going to cut around. So here's the thing. When you're doing stuff like that, you're obviously not, you know, paying attention too much to your control and handling. You're just trying to speed through things. And we all know these types of people. Don't be a part of that. Don't be in the same vehicle as that. Uh, it could be a matter of time before they crash into something. He almost did. So we're going to get up to here. Now he's going to apply a ton of brake pressure. Now, take a look. So when we talk about applying front progressive brake pressure, what happens to you when you do that, when you apply progressive brake pressure? Weight transfers to the front. It's because of the momentum, the weight, and everything suspension is going to transfer all the weight to the front. Now, when the weight transfers to the front, it gets transferred to the tire up front. So when the tire gets pressed down on the ground, it creates more and more traction. So more and more friction, more and more traction, better chance to stop. So the problem with a lot of people is they panic break before the weight transfers to the ground. So then it just slides. So one thing you can do right now, I want you guys all to stand up. Stand up right now. I know I'm in a chair. <laughs> stand up. Put all your weight on your left foot. Now apply a little bit of back and forth movement with your foot on your right foot. Slides across the ground. Now put a little bit of weight on your right foot. Now try to slide it across the ground. Now put a little bit more weight on that right foot. Now try to slide it across the ground. Now you're half and half, just stand up. Half weight, half weight. Now try to slide your foot. Now put all your weight on your right foot and try to slide it. Pretty hard. Pretty hard to do. And that's the whole friction, weight, transfer, everything. So right here, when we see this person transferring the weight to that front tire, there's a lot of traction on those front tires. 
So that's what it looks like when you apply a lot of progressive brake pressure. If you like today's video, make sure you click this video right here to keep watching more. But if you want to become a smart rider, click this and grab this Smart Rider Basic Training eBook. It's gonna help you become a smart rider by planning your ride, rescuing other riders, knowing what patterns to look for, and so much more. Make sure you grab it. Link will be in the description also. I'll be seeing you around.